What's going on? It's your boy Bad Existence, and I am back to do another video for you guys. And this video is going to be part two to how to grow a big beard. All right, we already did part one. If you have not watched part one, uh, make sure you do that. And if you're here for part two, buckle in. I believe this is going to be a good one with a lot of essential information. Okay. So in growing a big beard, product choices is what we're going to talk about right now. It's very important to choose the right products for your beard. And what that means is don't choose the right products for my beard or any other YouTuber or any company that promotes products. If you put those products in your beard and they don't work for you, don't use them. However, different times of the year, different products may work better in your beard. So I'm not telling you if you try something and you don't like it to never try it again because that product may work better for you when your beard's in a different state, when the health of your beard is different, or when it's a different season or a different time of year. Getting to know your beard is also an essential part of growing a big beard. So you may listen to people tell you how much products you should use in your beard. I'm probably one of them because I use a little bit more products uh, maybe than most. However, my beard may be uh, may absorb more products than most people's beards. So no one but your beard can tell you how much product you need to put into your beard. And the nighttime routine is essential in getting to know your beard and getting to learn how much products you should put in your beard. So for example, when I do my nighttime routine, I use extra product. I'm asleep uh, usually for anywhere from five to seven hours. When I wake up in the morning, if I still have excessive product in my beard, that means I went too heavy, okay? If you wake up in the morning and your beard is dry, that means you did not use enough product. You did not properly moisturize your beard at night and take advantage of that nighttime routine where you're not so worried about going out in public and having your beard looking a little bit too shiny or a little bit too greasy. Use that nighttime routine to benefit your beard. Get to know how much product you need to put in your beard to get your beard to the healthiest state possible so you can achieve the most growth. The next thing I'm gonna tell you about how to grow a big beard in this, in this session is going to be face, hair, follicle stimulation, okay? You cannot stimulate your own beard. You cannot stimulate your own facial hair growth. But, brothers, hopefully you have a lady. If you don't, get to know one. I'm going to tell you right now. Follicle stimulation is an important part of beard growth. Now, you massaging your own beard might feel good. You combing your own beard might feel good. But if you get your lady to at least twice a month, you sit down, you relax, kick your shoes off, and let her run her nice soft fingers through your beard and stimulate and massage your face, it's gonna increase blood flow and it's gonna increase beard growth. Trust me, and it's gonna feel fantastic. So put your lady on notice, let her know she's going to be an essential part of your beard journey process. Get her involved. Maybe once you get her involved and, and, and she feels like a part of your, of your beard journey, she may appreciate and enjoy your beard a lot more than she does now, okay? Get her involved, get her to start stroking that beard, stimulating the hair follicles, get, get up. And you don't have to use, when you do this step, don't use the beard oils you purchase that are $20 for a one ounce bottle, okay? Put a mixture together of carrier oils, okay? Or get one carrier oil. You don't, have to, you don't have to get extravagant. Buy one carrier oil, let your lady use that, and massage your beard. And in that one carrier oil, I would use, matter of fact, I'm gonna put another video out on what you should put in that carrier oil to help to stimulate that hair growth and for your lady to work in the beard. But I would use essential oils in that carrier oil that stimulate growth, um, that kill bacteria, and um, that increase blood flow, all of that. I would use those kind of essential oils. But I'm gonna get into that in another video. I don't wanna make this one run on long. The next thing, 
is the way you trim and maintain your beard. This is probably one of the most important parts of growing a big beard. And I'm gonna show you some of the mistakes we all have made and you may still be making. How do you trim your beard? Where do you set your lines? Where do you set your guidelines? Okay, so when we all first start growing a beard, you go to the barber, you may have a five o'clock shadow, whatever they, may, whatever they call it, right? And because you don't have a big beard, it would look weird if your beard started growing down your neck and you have a, a just a shadow, right? So it would look weird for the barber to leave that. So what he does is he normally, I'm gonna try and turn to the side, hopefully. He normally would probably take your beard up to right about here, all right? And he would cut everything off below, he would cut that off, all right? And this is what your beard would, would look like when you're first starting out. And that's that's the platform you start from. The problem with that is now when your beard starts to grow long and you start to look at your beard, when this, this area grows, you're gonna have a transparent see-through beard. So establishing your guidelines is gonna be very important as to how high you take your beard. I never, never trim underneath my neck anymore, all right? And if you look at my beard, there's a time when I started growing this part of my beard after here, all right? So all of this, just think about if, I, if my beard was stopped here, think about how much shorter it would be because all of this here from here below, look how much of a part it plays in the growth, in the length of my beard, right? Now, this is also the hair that sits down so that when you look at my beard from the front and this hair sticking down, it doesn't look transparent because all of this hair that's behind it, if I were to pull all this hair down, is what is what sticks down to make my beard look full. So making sure you're not taking this line on the side up too high is very important in how your beard is gonna look when your beard starts to grow. All right, okay. The next thing, the way you trim the sides of your beard. So a lot of people like to have their beard, and, and this is especially, especially for brothers with cur coarse curly beards. You like to have your beard look nice and trim on the sides. You like to have your beard somewhat, you know, like this. And you can still accomplish that with a big beard simply with a brush and a little bit of bomb. But in order to do that, you start coming in and the barber comes in with the trimmers or you do it and you trim all these hairs. Now, when you trim these hairs, this is growth, I'll show you. So let's just say I'm gonna take the very, very top. Okay, so this very top here. So if I were to cut this, right? So that this is flatter up here, I'd be cutting off all of this growth. All of this growth I need, and it, it was a lot longer before my, my big cut. All this growth is what I, I use to start growing down and every layer gets longer and longer so that when you look at my beard from the front, it's not transparent. So all the way up here, look at the length of my beard. I don't, I don't cut this, all right? And this is from the very top line. Don't trim your beard up in this area until you get your beard to the stage you want and then you can lightly trim, all right? Trimming your beard is very important and the way you do it is gonna impact how your beard looks and how big it will grow. Now, the most important and the biggest mistake I see a lot of brothers making. Brothers, if your beard is coarse and curly and the hairs are unruly, at different times, on different days, different hours, maybe even different minutes, different hairs are going to stick out. A lot of people call them scraggly hairs, um, the wispy hairs, whatever you want to call it. Do not cut those hairs off unless they are exactly or you know they are at the extreme tip of your beard because you do not know what you're cutting off. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Let me uh, comb that so it's not looking all crazy for the video. All right, so. I didn't really comb my beard out too much today. That's the other thing. Be gentle with the way you comb your beard. So after my nighttime routine, you saw the way my hair looked when I pulled it out. That's because 
it's it was used to being in the twist. So be careful with the way that, that you comb your beard out. Now, this is what brothers do. When I comb that out, if I were to go to the barber, he'd, he'd do the same thing. And then he'd look at my beard and say, you see, you see all these hairs that are sticking out, going all the way around my beard. And especially down here, they would consider these hairs making my beard look unhealthy. And they would say, if they were to cut these hairs up, then my beard would look a lot more healthy and a lot more full. That is true to some extent. But the problem with that is a lot of these hairs, it's not that these hairs are longer than the others. It's because when you have a curly beard, some hairs act differently. So at different times. So I may have some hairs that are just curled up right now. And if I were to blow dry or fully straighten my beard, I would then get to see how much of it is truly uneven. So when you go to clipping those hairs, you're actually making your beard more uneven and you're creating a beard that's gonna look even more sparse. So I'm gonna prove that to you. So you see all of these stragglers, right? Now, if I were to take my beard, let me just take the front, right? And I were to comb these stragglers. Okay, I'm just gonna comb those out, right? And then I'm gonna pull everything down to the tip. If I were to trim, the only way I'm gonna trim is if I stretch those hairs completely out, right? And then I look at that and then I say, okay, right there I can trim if I want to do a trim. I can knock that off. That would make my beard even. But in a natural state where some hairs are curled up tight, some hairs are curly, um, the comb, some hairs are straighter than others. If, if you just go to, okay, just go to trimming that up. I, and I've done it. Listen, I've gone in the bathroom and made my beard completely neat, trimming every little stray hair off and my beard looked fantastic. If I left the bathroom for two hours, three hours, combed my beard out again or went to sleep and woke up, I would have straggly hairs again because what happens is these curly hairs, some lay down, some curl in, some curl up. And the only reason why these hairs look somewhat straight right now is because of my nighttime routine, straightens these out. Otherwise they'd be super curly. Just keep that in mind, brothers. You're trimming, make sure you're not over trimming. You don't try to get your beard perfect. Don't try to make your beard to where you have no hair sticking out because the only way you're truly gonna do that is when you get to your, your exact desired length then you can do that and you can keep doing it at your desired length and don't go past that. And you would have a nice neat beard at the length you want. But if you do that along the way, you're cutting off hair that is necessary for you to you reaching your beard length goals. Okay, so I'm not trimming anything unless it's split. I'll go through and I'll search for a split, a split end and I'll grab that one hair and I'll just cut that one hair right before the split. Or I'll do the same thing with knots, but I'm not just gonna go in with a clipper and start shaping this right now because basically I'd be shaping based on the way my beard is combed. Now, I see this video has already dragged on a little bit too long. I didn't wanna do that. So I'm gonna stop it here. There's a lot more I wanna share with you brothers. I guess I'll put it in another episode. Hey brothers, thanks for sticking with me. If you're not a subscriber, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, tap the bell so you get notified every time I drop the video. Hit the like button for me. It actually helps the channel out. If you're already a subscriber, as always, I appreciate all your support, all your feedback. I appreciate you rocking with your boy, and I'll be back soon with another video. And hey, y'all brothers have a blessed week, and your boy see y'all soon, all right? Peace.